from Dearborn, Michigan. It's the Cube on the ground at Ford headquarters. Now here's your host, Jeff Frick. Hi, Jeff Frick here with the Cube. We are in Dearborn, Michigan, at the at the Further with Ford uh, Ford Trends event. Uh, two-day media event to really get up to speed with what Ford is doing with autonomous vehicles and really the bigger trend about mobility. And we're excited to have CUBE alumni, a seasoned Ken before he came on. His wife's going to get jealous the way we keep meeting like this. Uh, Ken Washington, the VP Research for Advanced Engineering for Ford. Ken, it's great to be here in, uh, in your turf and not in Palo Alto for a change. Yeah, it's great to have you here. Welcome to Dearborn. Absolutely. So, a lot of exciting news. You know, we've, we've talked to you over and over since this kind of journey began when you guys first opened up in Palo Alto. Then a couple weeks ago, Mark came out to announce really the moonshot. He didn't describe it that way, but I described it that way. You know, fully autonomous cars, level four and five years for ride sharing services. And then last week, I get the announcement more news coming. You guys bought Chariot you know, kind of a ride sharing service and you announced the bicycle uh, initiative. So you guys are really all in on this mobility. This is not just, uh, you know, talk and PR. You guys are all in. You said it right. This is, uh, this is serious for us and we are absolutely serious about being an automaker and a mobility company. So uh, absolutely. So how do all these pieces play? And, and I'm just curious, culturally at Ford, you know, we had Ken on before and, and how do you get the culture around this thing that we're more than just a car company? Are people buying in? Is it a new day at Ford? Are they excited? I mean, clearly you're excited. Clearly Mark's excited. But how's it kind of playing here in Dearborn? Well, it starts by being, uh, like I said, all in. And uh, our, our employees, they, they're noticing that we're all in because we're, we're putting action behind our words. And the action today that you're experiencing is we have our cars on the road today. And we have been doing this for over 10 years. And now we actually have the vehicles on the road. Our employees can see that our autonomous vehicles are are working on public roads. They're they're going through stop signs, through stoplights. They're recognizing pedestrians, navigating safely on a route that's that's a true open public road. That kind of evidence tells our employees that we're in this for real, and that we are making very good progress, and we've got great momentum toward our 2021 goal, the moonshot that Mark talked about. And uh, we're making progress, we're getting there. You're getting there. So one of the topics I don't think is talked about enough, and it really should have got more press when, when the poor fortunate guy crashed his, his, uh, his car on autonomous mode, but he was not paying attention and the car crashed. You talked about Ford is going straight to level four. Right. And when we took our drive in the autonomous vehicle here, which was pretty fun, but kind of boring, which is what you hope in an autonomous drive. <laughs> you know, I noticed Gus, our driver, you know, had his hands, the safety driver, ready to go at a moment's notice. And it really begs a question on these kind of halfway solutions, because what's a driver to do if you think you're in autonomous mode, but it's not fully autonomous? Do you have to pay attention? Do you not pay attention? And we all know it's about reaction time and emergency. So if you're already kind of not paying attention, how do you get somebody, hey, wake up and pay attention and then execute whatever the maneuver is? So you guys have just said, forget that. We're going to skip right to fully autonomous. It's really important. That, you, you said it well. You know, we, we really put safety first. And by putting safety first, we, we want to make sure that when you're in a vehicle and that vehicle has the capability to um, assist you as a driver, that we're clear that this is assistance as a driver. Right? Right. So our vehicles you can buy today that have driver assist technologies on them uh, and the vehicles that you'll be able to buy over the next few years, because we're tripling our investment in driver assist technologies, they're gonna be able to assist you even better with, driver, with traffic jam assist and ultimately with highway assist. These are great features for making the, the experience of driving your vehicle more enjoyable and, and a little more um, comfortable but they are driver assist technologies. What you're seeing today with our fully autonomous test fleet, our fully autonomous level four vehicles that the driver can be out of the loop. And we're doing it that way for two reasons. One is because it, like you said, you can't wake up the driver and re-engage them if they haven't been engaged. Right, right. And so in our research, we found that that's, that's a hard thing to do. So we're focusing on level four, but the second and, and probably the more important reason is because it opens up the business model to enable a ride service where you don't have to have a driver. Right. So we're working toward that capability. And as we work toward that capability, we need to make sure we safely test the, cap the, the, the features, which is why we have that safety driver there ready to take over control 
because it's still a work in progress. Yeah, and Gus was on it. I was like, Gus, you got to be getting Good tired. His, his hands were like right over the thing the whole Good time. But him. it really begs the question because, again, if it's not fully autonomous, it's not autonomous. It's an assist. So you got to pay attention. That's exactly right. The other thing I think is really interesting what you guys are doing is, is in this whole mobility thing from the bikes to the cars to the ride sharing service. You know, somewhere along the, along the line, cars in the cities especially are less about freedom and excitement in the open road and more about kind of traffic and congestion and parking challenges. So you guys, again, getting out ahead of the curve on that by taking this kind of multimodal full spectrum and getting engaged across the board. A lot different than when you and I probably turned 16 and look forward to getting that first driver's license. That's right. You know, the, 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 the future customers are thinking about mobility very differently. And, and even today's customers are when, when they live in congested environments because the world is changing. The world is getting more urban and much more congested and traffic patterns are, are a lot tougher today and parking is harder to find. And a lot of the traffic that you see in inner cities are driven by parking challenges. And so having a solution that allows, allows people to have choice, like riding a bike or taking a shuttle and sharing that ride and being picked up at a location where you are and hailing that ride from an app these are made possible with with the technology that's available today. We're embracing that and we're bringing it to our customers with our smart mobility program. Right. And ultimately, we're going to bring autonomy to that as well. But the first priority for us in autonomy is to open up that ride service on our campus in 2018 and then in 2021 for a ride service for the public. So the whole another topic beyond the technology is the regulation. So I was at a great event, a Bloomberg event put on by Western Digital a couple weeks ago, and they had a bunch of representatives from the Department of Transportation. There's a lot of really complex social and policy and, and those types of issues that have nothing to do with the cars and the technology that have to be kind of sorted out. And, you know, generally the government kind of trails technology because they're, you know, they're kind of following as the developments come about. What are you guys doing on that realm to worry about some of these kind of softer aspects of what's going to make autonomous vehicles really real? That, those are really important questions and they have to be answered and the only way you can answer those is by having a conversation with the entire industry. We need to engage multiple OEMs, multiple technology companies and have the kind of conversations with policymakers to inform them about what the art of the possible is so they have the facts and so that we can be part of the dialogue around how to set policies to help make it a good experience for people, but also make it uh, you know the right policy framework that allow these services to be used in a in an environment where um, you know there needs to be regulation. Yeah. So we we're one of the um, uh, founding members of, of of one of the first coalitions to have these kind of conversations, the Self Driving Coalition for self Safer Streets, and we're excited to be part of that along with uh, a number of other. Uh, technology companies and, and car companies. So it's a good start, but much more to come. Much more to come. It's just really exciting times. You know, we've been covering you guys for a while since you really opened up the, the Palo Alto facility, which now is tripling in size. You know, congratulations to Thank you and you. the team. We cover GE and, you know, what Bill Rue has been able to do with GE Digital out in San Ramon. And again, 200 year old plus companies, you know, really reinventing themselves around the digital future, software easing the world, as Mark Andreessen likes to say. Really exciting times and, and, and really kind of old steel, old industrial companies. So good job. Uh, for you and the team. Well, we like to think of ourselves as a right. as a technology enabled mobility company and an automotive company, and and we're walking the talk. And Silicon Valley presence in our Rick Palo Alto facility is is really helping us a lot to to accelerate our move to being an automaker and a mobility company, as well as the innovations you're seeing here with our autonomous vehicle program and our connectivity work and our mobility work. It's all coming together to to bring the future of uh, mobility to life. It helps get get you up in the morning, huh? Every day, it's, it's exciting time to be in the <laughs> It is a good time. It's really a great time. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Ken, I'm sure we'll be seeing you again. We look forward to the next uh, announcement. They seem to be coming in, in rapid progression, so uh, look forward to seeing that. And uh, thanks for taking a few minutes. It's been my pleasure. All right, Dr. Ken Washington. I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching the Cube. We're in Dearborn, Michigan, at the Ford Mobility Event. Actually, the further with Ford. Thanks for watching.